Legend has it, we could be legends Etched in the stone, forever on thrones Histories made in the moments Heroes collide, it's all on the line With our backs against the wall We came to fight Hi there everybody. I hope you enjoyed the intro and as you've probably already realized, it's time to announce the launch of a very special frame that I have been working on for almost exactly a year now. This is the AOS Cine 80 and it takes everything that I have learned about how to design a super high performance, ultra low vibration airframe and scales it up to an eight inch Cine lifter. And as I'll show you later in the video, this Cine lifter actually has better vibration and resonance performance than the vast majority of five inch FPV drones. And I'm going to talk you through the key design features of the frame that allow it to achieve that performance in just a little bit. After we've looked through the key features of the frame, I'm going to talk you through a black box log analysis to see how those design features have affected the flight performance and what benefits this is going to give you for carrying these heavier cinema cameras. And finally, I'm going to be showing you where you can order your Cine 80 today, either a frame kit or as a full build, both through Quad Standard Labs. It's a lot to cover in one video. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So let me take you through the key design features of the Cine 80 on the bench. Let's start by talking about the arm design, which is quite different from other frames that I've designed in the past. The Cine 80 uses a vertical truss arm structure to achieve its vibration and resonance performance. And a vertical truss is even higher performing than the typical trusses that I've used on previous frames. You can see we have two vertical pieces of carbon fiber and that these pieces lock into the top plate and the bottom plate with these cutouts. There are two long screws that pass down all the way through the top plate and the bottom plate and screw into press nuts in the bottom plate. And as you screw those screws down, the tolerances of the arm and the nylon spacers that are between the top and bottom plate allow you to compress the arm really tightly between the top and bottom plate. It creates an enormous amount of friction and locks the arm in place really, really securely. Because you have two mounting positions for each of the, the kind of arm structures, it gives you enormous stiffness, not just up and down, so the motor moving up and down, which is what the vertical arm gives you, but you also get enormous stiffness in the torsional direction and also in the forward and backward direction of the arm as well, because you've got these two mounting points here which helps to give you a wider moment arm to resist all those loads. And the result is that this vertical truss arm structure is phenomenally stiff for its weight, and it's phenomenally stiff in all three directions which you care about for managing vibration and resonance. As you'll see later on in the video, the first frame resonance that is visible on the Cine 80 is up at 250 hertz, which is higher than the vast majority of five inch freestyle frames which gives you an idea of just how effective this truss structure can be, even with the much heavier motors that we have on Cine lifters. Another advantage of having these vertical arms lock in in this way is that the friction that's created between the top plate, the bottom plate, and the vertical arm section adds Coulomb damping, and that helps dissipate vibration in the frame as heat and avoids it getting into the gyro. The next thing to talk about is the motor mounting. 
The motor mounting consists again of a top plate and a bottom plate separated by these nylon spacers and again when you screw those screws down into the motor mounting plates you squeeze the arm create an enormous amount of friction and lock everything together. The motors on this frame are canted and what that means is that they lean slightly in the tangential direction about three degrees and that canting improves the yaw authority of the quad. Now your authority on sin lifters is a big problem. You've got a much larger mass to rotate around the yaw axis and you've only got a certain amount of reaction torque from the motors. By tangentially canting the motor over slightly, you get a small component of the motor thrust in the yaw direction and that vastly improves the amount of authority that the flight controller has on the yaw axis and this is really helpful for controlling dynamic yaw moves. Looking at the bottom of the drone now, and you can see we have three positions for captive battery straps, and they support really large battery straps up to 25 millimeters wide or so for securing the battery really firmly to the bottom plate. You'll also see that those battery straps are captured by this plate here. And if we remove this plate, we can reveal the internal electronics of the drone. So as you can see, once we remove this battery plate, you have access to the internals of the drone. And in fact, this is a prototype, but in the final version of the Cine 80 that you'll be able to order, this maintenance zone is actually extended. It's a little bit longer, both in front and in back. So you can access all of the three stack mounts within the body of the drone without having to take it apart. And so this makes it a lot easier to build and maintain the drone because you can build the drone like this and then with the frame and motors attached, you can install all the electronics through this maintenance hatch or add a receiver, anything like that without having to take the drone apart. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to build and easier to maintain as well. If you're considering building out the Cine 80, I would advise you to put both four in one ESCs on the rear stack, flight control in the middle, and then whatever VTX system you prefer up front. That will make it really easy for you to route your battery cable out of the rear of the drone. And you can see here that I've actually used two wires, one wired to each ESC and then onto a single XT90 connector in my build. And by using two thinner wires rather than one really thick wire, it can make it just a little bit more flexible and easier to route that cable uh, and plug it into the battery in the field. There's also plenty of space back here to mount large capacitors on your ESCs. Let's look now at the top plate in more detail. So you can see that we have hard points for VTX antenna mounting. So you can have the antenna coming up vertically and out of the way of the props. And that we have the camera mount up front and then some space in the rear for mounting things like transmitters, batteries or other accessories for your cinema camera. If we talk now about the camera mounting, the Cine 80 is available with two different types of camera mount. The first one is this carbon camera mount, the AOS carbon mount, and this has adjustable camera angle from minus five degrees up to 45 degrees, and is suitable for most typical cinema cameras like a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema or something like this Red Komodo. The Cine 80 will also be available with the DAC universal camera mount, and it has all the correct mounting positions for that as well. So you can choose whichever camera mount you prefer. Whichever camera mount you pick, you should be aware that the Cine 80 can be configured both in a forward facing configuration for the camera, and also you can build the drone entirely in reverse. So you can fit the camera plates here at the back, and then you can mount the camera mount facing downwards like this for um, rearward facing shots. So this makes the drone very flexible. You can have two different builds, one for forward facing and one for rearwards facing. And that works whether you're using the AOS carbon mount or the DAC camera mount. If you're looking for a recommendation for motors and props for this build, then I would recommend a 2808 sized motor with about 1300 kV and something like this 8x3.7x3 or maybe a 7x4x3 prop. The 2808 1300kV motors are really well matched to a lighter pitched 8 inch or a heavier 7 inch prop 
and both of those options will carry a typical 1.5 kilo cinema camera payload very, very easily. And the final thing to say is that if you're looking for 3D prints and landing gear for this frame, then there are links to all of that down in the video description. Let's take a look now at a black box log analysis to see how the Cine 80 performs from a vibration and resonance standpoint. If we start by looking at the gyroscaled log on the roll axis, we can see immediately that the frame is incredibly quiet at low frequencies. Now, one of the advantages of having a low vibration frame is that you eliminate the need to run damping materials between the frame and your camera mount. So no alpha gel dampers, no silicon dampers, nothing like that. And that makes the whole frame much more rigid and it effectively eliminates all of those low frequency payload vibrations which typically plague most sin lifters. We can see that there are no vibrations, no resonances at all up until we start seeing motor noise. And for those of you who are more used to looking at five inch logs, these motor bands are much lower in frequency because eight inch props just spin that much slower. If we switch over to look at a frequency versus throttle spectrum, you can see that there's no resonant activity in the Cine 80 at all until you get up to, well, this is the first resonant mode I think about here, 270 Hertz. You might also say that there could be some resonant activity here at 250 Hertz, but below that, absolutely nothing. The frame is dead silent. And we can see the result of that in the D term on the roll axis, which is also absolutely silent and that really really helps with reducing the amount of filtering that you need and we'll talk about that in a second if we look at the pitch axis you can see exactly the same story nothing at low frequencies a really large quiet dead zone and then the first motor band if we look at frequency versus throttle again you can see the first resonance coming in just around 250 hertz here and maybe another resonance up here at around 270 hertz but below that, absolutely nothing, the frame's dead silent. And that again gives us an exceptionally quiet D-term on the pitch axis. And the yaw axis is also really, really quiet as well. It is very typical. Frames that have good performance on pitch and roll almost always have good performance on yaw also. The benefit of this vibration and resonance performance really comes to light in the filter settings that you can run on the Cine 80. Now, on my Cine 80, this is my configuration, I have no gyro filtering at all. I have RPM filtering, one dynamic notch, and a D-term low pass filter of a biquad type ranging 75 to 110 hertz. And this is pretty much the same filtering that I run on my five inch freestyle drones. And with filtering, less is more. So the less filtering you have, the less delay you have, the more quickly the quad can respond to turbulence, to prop wash, and the smoother your footage is gonna end up being. I hope you enjoyed learning all there is to know about the new AOS Cine 80. If you think that the versatility and flight performance of this frame will add value to the work that you do, please check out the links in the video description where you can order your Cine 80 today, either as a frame kit or a full build from Quad Standard Labs. If you're not in the market for a Cine lifter, but you are excited about some of the technology and features that you've seen in the Cine 80, then make sure you're subscribed because some of those technologies are gonna trickle down into some smaller frames very, very soon. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very happy flying.